Coming up on Theater Talk. The one song that, that David Merrick hated, I mean would growl <laughs> when he came backstage, was a song called Hello Dolly. <laughs> oh, he hated, David Merrick hated the title song? He really? hated it. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. So Michael, it is a monumental occasion on Broadway right now. We are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Hello, Dolly. Right, one of the great musicals of all time, which I think held the uh, record for the most number of Tony Awards until the producers came along yes. and won 12, and I think Dolly had 10 or 11. But we want to uh, talk about uh, Hello, Dolly, its history, the original production, with some people who have been involved in it for many, many years. Uh, please welcome to Theater Talk tonight. Uh, one of my great friends here in the New York Theater, the wonderful Sandra Lee, who was the original Minnie Fay in the 1964 production of Hello, Dolly. Am I, am I correct there? That's true. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, joining us also is the great Marge Champion, who was married to Gower Champion, the director and choreographer of Hello, Dolly. And Marge, you worked as Gower's uh, associate and assistant on the original. I Dolly. did indeed. Not only as a partner when we were dancing and doing movies of our own and stuff like that. Yes, March was a quite the star Absolutely. with Gower Champion. Yeah. But, but the thing I love about you, March, and even before you were a dancing star, you were the... I was the live action model. For yes. Snow White. It was when rotoscoped. I was when I was 14. And also we have a third guest here, the original Dolly Levi, Mr. Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to spring that one on you. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was Carol Cheney, but Leroy's been associated with Jerry Herman musicals for a long time, and you were Cornelius Hackle in a 1978 revival with Carol. The first revival, yes. Right, right. And then I directed the last revival, which was 94. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me ask um, you guys, this show endures. I mean, I've seen it five or six or seven times. It's on the road right now with Sally Struthers. What is the reason that Hello, Dolly! always works and will always work. It's the book. You think so, yeah. It's the Thornton Wilder story that it's, works. It and is. And Mike adapted it beautifully. Mike Stewart. Jerry wrote wonderful, wonderful songs, so the piece fits together so well as a musical, because the backbone and the most underappreciated part is always the book. Right. And this has a very strong book. That's yeah. why it's preserved. And also, it had brilliant, brilliant staging by Gower Champion, do you, do, I think his best. When, when it's a revive, do they always use Gower's classic staging, the great waiter gallop and all mm. that stuff? No. They and should. They, I'm pretty sure. It was before the days when uh, I think that that was uh, Jerry Robbins who finally got, they had to do his choreography. Yeah, you can't do Fiddle on the Roof without yes. Jerry Robbins. Also, yes. Michael, I, I think that one of the ingredients of this particular show, having been in in it originally is that uh, is that Gower had a very unique way of casting things mm. I mean in other words there's there's we were unlikely of uh, the four of us I mean we're talking about uh, about Eileen Brennan. Eileen Brennan right yes mm -hmm. we're talking about Charles Nelson Riley Charles Nelson the Riley the heart no, because when he and David Merrick decided that it was Carol Channing who was going to be in it. Mm -hmm. He had different people for uh, different people that he thought might be, uh, to back them up, but he knew he needed people who were larger than life. Right, to match and Carol. Mm -hmm. To match Carol, mm -hmm. and it worked. We should also remember a uh, wonderful character actor who may have been forgotten, David Burns, right? Who, oh, yes. great oh, well. David Burns. One, wonderful fellow. Uh, Wasn't get, Charles uh, Nelson Riley a wonderful person? Charles yes. Oh, he great. was. He's one of the funniest people in the world. Funny, funny, funny. In, in a way, we were all showstoppers. Mm -hmm. And we, we were really 
organized to work with each other in a very ensemble way mm. in terms of the play itself. Well, the four of you really made that opening of the second act. Yes. Yeah. It made the... The and what was that song? What's that song? Elegance. 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 Oh, it's one of my, my favorite God songs. Elegance. It's got Edson yeah. and Minnie Faye has pedigree. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, so take us back to the, this original production, um, Sandra and Marge. What, how, how, uh, what shape was the show in before you got into rehearsals? I mean, was, was, was Jerry's score really pretty much all there? Was the book tight? Was there a lot of work that Gower had to do to shape the show? Except for the eating of all that stuff and that and that in the second act which he spent too much time on he had to change almost everything in uh, in uh, Detroit really those changes were being done in Detroit but also a horrendous thing happened yes. in this country yes it was the death of the prisoners that's right oh. yes. you were out of town in 63 yeah we were we were in Detroit at that time yes and it was and we were going, and, and we were, and we were going to Washington. Right. Right after the, we had a month in in Detroit, at for, and he had to fix it, and he kept bringing other people, uh, other musicians, uh, composers, Writers. up to. Uh, David and Mary kept bringing people up to scare Jerry yeah. Herman. Charles, Charles he Strauss. He was only he was only twenty six years old. Right, and the story goes when um, someone suggested Jerry to David Merrick. Jerry had written Milk and Honey. Yes, and, yeah. and that David was Merrick, the only show. That's right, and David Merrick said, no, no, he can only write ethnic music. No, Jewish operettas. Jewish operettas. <laughs> <laughs> <But> okay, <laughs> the, the one song that, that David Merrick hated, I mean would growl <laughs> when he came backstage, was a song called Hello, Dolly. <laughs> oh, he hated the, David Merrick hated the title song? He really? hated it. Why? Why? He hated it. He As did Hal Prince. Gotta change no, Hal Prince. He was the original director and wanted it cut before he said he would do the show. Why? Why did they dislike this? Uh, and Jerry's Jerry, biggest. It was Jerry Robbins. He, the, uh, the, and he said, and he said, How and I, I, I don't, I don't like the show. And uh, the first thing I would cut is that song, Hello, Hello Dolly. Hello, Dolly. <laughs> and Gower said, when he heard the song, he said it made him think of the passere, you know, mm. where he could bring her out into the audience mm -hmm. oh. and uh, when she spoke to uh, Ephraim. Ephraim, yes, she could she could be on that the, the runway, on that, the that, runway, the passerelle. The but that's so, yes. so interesting so we did. three, yeah. three yeah. different directors, two think I can't work with the song mm -hmm. and the third comes up with one of the most brilliant, brilliantly <laughs> staged numbers of I all time. I think the best <laughs> staged musical number in the history of the theater. Yeah. Hello Dolly is perfect. Every yeah. single bit of it is perfect. Yeah. Well, I remember Jerry telling me years ago when he, he wrote the song as an audition piece for David because he begged David, give me a chance, and he went home to his apartment in the village and he knocked off four or five songs. True. One of them was Hello, Dolly, and all of the waiters' names were originally, and some of them still in there, were all of his relatives. <laughs> Manny's a cousin, <laughs> Harry was an uncle. Yeah. <laughs> he, would, he would put those songs into, into the thing. Uh, tell us a little bit about... Um, Oh, can I tell you just yeah, sure, something course, please, a little please. thing about Jerry Herman? Mm -hmm. And that is when we did the recording, mm -hmm. you know, and he burst into tears. I mean, the tears were running down his cheeks. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so touching. And I went to him and I said, gosh, that's you know, so wonderful and so inspiring. He said, he said I burst into tears every orchestra rehearsal. <laughs> Those songs mean so much. Were you performing the show or were you rehearsing the show when Kennedy was shot? I think we were performing. You were we per were performing. Yeah, because I remember were Carol they close? being on the phone to the White House yeah. as saying, we're all going to keep working. We're all going to keep working. I, I was astounded. Wow. And also another thing was, was well, there was a radio it, backstage. And I remember, I remember Eileen with the pink curlers in her hair and all of us hovering over this little radio like it was, like it was a radiator or a fireplace mm. for more news. For, and then having to go on stage and yeah. do your scene and then come yes. back to listen to the radio. Yeah. Now, well, well, it, it, no, we shut down for two days. But of course, well, of the course, whole the assassination would have gone on for four. Everything I mean, was shut down for two days. Yes. And very interesting things happened during we, the we course were, of We were in Detroit still. Yeah. And uh, before the parade passes by, went in later too. Mm -hmm. That uh, that went in much later, and, and you all uh, you all had to or, or everybody had to wear uh, mock-up co costumes because the costumes weren't ready. ready. Yeah, they weren't ready until we got to New York. 
And, and Charles it, Strauss came up with that idea right. for Parade, but Jerry wrote the song. Yeah, here's the question. Yes. There's it always been these rumors clear, that, that Jerry out. didn't write the entire score to Hello, Dolly, that Charlie Strauss wrote some of it. Is that not, not that true? That is not true. Jerry I, wrote I, I, inter I interviewed both of them because at one time I was going to write a book about this, and they both told exactly the same stories. He had an idea, and he encouraged Jerry. Yes. But he did not write any of the e any of the songs. Mm. That's what, fascinating. Wasn't there, oh. But there was another but, composer who was brought in, and and he's the one who did. Bob Merrill. Bob Merrill. Bob yes. yes. Which is I mean, elegance. he kept bringing. Uh, uh, oh, he wrote Elegance. Yes. Oh, yes. Bob Merrill wrote Elegance. Oh, that's interesting. And I think part of Motherhood. Right. But, but wasn't that David somebody wrote? Both those, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I knew wasn't that was. wasn't that David Merrick's um, way of working though? I mean, he would bring yes. he would yes. bring the competition Intimidate up to, terri yeah. to terrify. Absolutely, and he terrify did it on Forty Second Street too. I mean, he's famous for that. But an interesting story now. Then they will clear it up because they were there. I wasn't because uh, when the show was in Detroit and it was in trouble and it didn't get good reviews, and David Merrick was going to close the show. Mm -hmm. And Shirley Eater, who, Shirley Eater, who wrote for the Detroit Free Press, had a friend who was coming to review for Variety, and she said, you're going to give this show a good review because my friend Carol Channing is <laughs> in it. <laughs> and he did. Yes. And Gower took that review when David was going to close the show, went to L.A., got backing, and was going to buy the show from David, from David. And came back and said, I'll buy the show. It's going to continue. And David said, okay, I'll stick it out. <laughs> is you that true? That? Is that true, March? Yes. I, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's fascinating. You, can I say something? I mean, I as a performer, as an actor, whether it's a play or whether it's a musical or a ballet, I don't know where these people get all these stories. <laughs> <laughs> Simply because when you're there, all you want to do is, you know, break your butt and do it the best you can. <laughs> and all of the gossip and all the stuff that goes on, I never knew. <laughs> Le Leroy's a collector of that. But see, <laughs> now, see, Michael, you've got that power. I yeah. that's you true. Think yeah. of that. Where do you get you? them, Michael? <laughs> you get them from Le the Leroy Reemses of today, who, who hear a great story and they can't wait I, to tell everybody. None of those those stories, though. Like, oh, oh you I, know? I, I, I'm, I'm curious, Marge. Can you can you describe for me the relationship that? David Merrick and Gower Champion Head, because they worked together in some very successful shows, but I know that they are, there must have been tension between the two of them. There was a lot of tension. He left when the, he brought Bob Merrill up. He left and he, and he said to the stage manager, when Mr. Mustache leaves here, give me a call and I'll come back. And he went to uh, another uh, city. So Gower, Gower called David Mr. Mustache? <laughs> at that time. Later on, in, and uh, that is a very sad thing, uh, during uh, was 42nd, it 42nd Street. Street, Yes, that's when he decided that the only way to treat David was to let, let him in, because he, he never let him into rehearsal. Yeah, and, and, and it was in the contract with 42nd Street. David was not allowed to come in until the show had opened to audiences. <laughs> then he could come in. But uh, Gower was the one who was totally in charge. Mm -hmm. And he worked very privately and very quietly. And uh, I th think he is one of the most brilliant people in the theater. And those, that time with 42nd Street working with him was probably the highlight of my life. Mm. To watch him create and see and things that would come out of his mind that were so clear. I watched him stage yeah, but can I, can I things right off the top of his head with us doing it. And it was brilliant. Yeah. And uh, what I think was one of the outstanding things about working with Gower because we didn't come from the same dance background. I came from Jerry. Uh, but what he Jerry allowed Robbins. us with that script was to contribute. Mm. And in an odd way, if you get an idea, you went to Gower and you said, you know, I think, and maybe if I go into the closet, and then just come back. And then it dawns on me, he said, do it. Mm. So you couldn't do that with Jerry Robbins? Not quite the same. No, no. <laughs> Gower was a little more uh, <laughs> open to the ideas from the. Yeah, he was. Uh, well, actually, uh, he he honored the book, and as an actor, you felt free to discuss that with your director. I wouldn't argue with him <laughs> dance-wise, you know. If, if if that's what he wanted, that's what he got. But but when it came to things within the scenes, mm -hmm. he allowed us our own. You know, our own mind, our own creativity. Yeah. They say that Robbins could be 
um, you know, really mean and cruel and scary. And he could be. Yeah, and you know, and Fosse was certainly had his demons, and Michael Bennett could manipulate psychologically the people with him. How did Gower treat his cast? With respect. With respect. He was not an intimidating man. He was not, not at prone all. To no. Because what happened when I mean now I'm talking about 42nd Street. I can't talk about Hello Dolly, but yeah. at 42nd Street we came in he two weeks before Ill. the company came in, and we worked with uh, Wanda Richard, myself, and the two dance assistants worked with them privately. And he was very open to. We brought our sense of style into it, and we're in the money. Was all my tapping. Yeah. He Great. used that because he didn't tap dance. Yeah. Now, Marcia right. So he, he just developed and said, you go here, you go there, and we did it. And it was wonderful, and it was instant. You I, just went him because he was brilliant. Marcia just made the point that Gower was very ill when you were working with him also. Yes. Yes, yes. yes he was. Yeah, but you know what? I was in Spoleto. This is about Gower. I was in Spoleto doing something else, <laughs> and uh, the phone rang, and it was Gower Champion, who said, I have this... Uh, this play I'd like you to do. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and so he sent me that. I read it and I called him back. This was Hello Dolly, he said. In Hello Dolly. Yeah. And I said, I can't find it. And he said, the script? I said, no, the part. <laughs> and he said, that's why I called. <laughs> oh, because he knew that you could help create. Yes. <laughs> but he let us all really do what, what we did. And, that, and I think. And I think that was part of his genius with the book. Now, Marge, when you helped Gower Champion create his career, when you were the television stars, Marge and mm -hmm. Gower Champion, mm -hmm. and movie stars, did he allow you equal creativity, or was he dictatorial to, to you, his wife? His he couldn't have done it without her, honey. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I was a well, uh, I was a well-trained ballet dancer because my father was a ballet master, and. Uh, I could I could uh, suggest things that he wouldn't have thought of, mm. uh, you know. He he actually we rehearsed for a long time with each act that we did, uh, and not just at the studio. And he also uh, worked with Bob Fosse in uh, in my, one of the films. Yes, right. I remember. Give that. a girl a break, mm -hmm. and the two of them were always vying for. They were always competing. And they and uh, they really created quite a funny number in that show, in that movie when they were in the park. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, two, two yeah, geniuses going just, up I against each other. I have to add other. a story to that only yeah. because it was the night that the show opened, <clears throat> and of course Gower had died that afternoon. Forty second. Forty second. Yeah. So yeah. when I walked into the opening night party of Forty Second Street, the first person I saw was Bob Fosse, mm -hmm. who came up to me and said, "Quote, that son of a bitch. I filmed my death." And he had to do me one better by doing it on the opening day, <laughs> which was very funny. And I said, you know, Gower is laughing from up there, Bob. It was a great, great response. Yes. I want, we can't talk about Hello, Dolly without talking about Carol Channing, who hey, I know is a great uh, friend of yours. And you toured with her in 78. Did she ever feel a prisoner of this role, or did she just love doing it again no. and again and again? She no loved every single minute of it. Yeah. She was like a racehorse in the stall waiting for the bell to ring every single night. Huh. She, uh, as I said, 110%. Mm. Carol can't wait to get out on stage and, and to go right to the audience. She loved the she, role of She Dolly. never wanted to have her dressing room fixed up because she said she always wanted to get out on the stage. Mm -hmm. Oh, she didn't want to lounge around. She in didn't want to lounge room around room and like even that. between acts. She, she just wanted to get out on the Did stage. Did she ever say that, you know, I wish that I'd done more roles in the musical theater. I wish I'd done other musicals rather oh, than... Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure she did, but I think the fact that she created two iconic roles, Lorelei Lee yeah. and Hello, Dolly, most people in the theater never have that experience. They do a lot of shows, but never to have these huge, huge wonderful role. roles. I mean, I want to play Hello, Dolly. Don't you want to play Hello, Dolly? Yes, It's one of the best parts <laughs> ever written. I, I, no, I want to do head. it. I want to wear those big I'm serious. I, uh, one time, I don't remember exactly whether it was a nighttime or at a party or whatever, but Mr. Merrick, I'd never called him David, uh, <laughs> Mr. Merrick um, uh, said, and, and that uh, hello Dolly with everybody in red and her coming in <laughs> red, what the hell is that? And I said, it's a monument to menopause. <laughs> <laughs> Did David have a response to that? He laughed. It was the only time I ever, ever heard David Merrick laugh. I had to tell a story on March. 
<laughs> because so many people, you know, they always want to redo Dolly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always want to do this. And, of yeah. course, they say, well, when we did our version, <laughs> she came down the staircase in a green dress. <laughs> <laughs> and Marge says, did it make the show better? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, well, it's the 50th anniversary of Hello, Dolly. I do believe that Jimmy Niederlander still has the rights, and he keeps talking to me about doing a full-fledged Broadway revival with uh, Queen Latifah is a name that I hear, <laughs> Bette Midler is a name that They want around. to recreate it, Michael, and I think they need to rediscover it right. more than recreate it because the show is there and the work that Gower Champion did in it. I mean, everything is always adjusted to the people doing it. The reason why that show ran for so long was so many different women doing it, yeah. because it became a different show with, with each woman. Yeah. But the staging of that show is perfection. They couldn't do it in the movie with millions of dollars any better. Mm -hmm. The Waiter's Gallop, which Gower Champion did, was so brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael the Kidd parade with millions by. of dollars and all sorts of camera tricks couldn't make the number better than it was done on stage. And I'm telling you, I've seen many, many productions, but that original concept is perfect. Yeah. I've well, never seen another production. You, only really? The, only I, the original. I can't bring myself wow. to, see, to see almost anything I've ever been in. But Sandra, I, if Leroy plays Dolly Levi, you'll go to see that one. <laughs> Actually, I would, go it, I, I would go to it because he's truer and more dedicated to the reality of what it was he, and what it should be. He did but, a better, and, I always say, he did a better uh, second time. Revival. A revival. Right. Better than anything. I mean, he even got Carol to be down and dirty in the... In, so uh, long, dearie. So yeah, long, so dearie. I heard about <laughs> it. Mark told have, me. I've well, actually, got, how'd you get Carol to be down and dirty? Well, what happened with, with that revival, of course, you know, Carol was so married to what she did because I wanted her to rediscover things. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. said, you know, Carol, we have to think that really Dolly was a women's liber. Yeah. She, you know, managed to make a living out of, you know, imitating things her husband did just to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when she does So Long Deary, she says to him, okay, you say you don't want me, I'm telling you, I don't want you. I'm out of here, but what I got is so good but you can't have it, so wave your little hand. So it became a whole other thing going she on. She must have loved and that. And she actually did more choreography in that, and she did all the other choreography, so she did more choreography in the revival than she did originally, and wow. she was 76 then. All right, well, it's the 50th anniversary of Hello, Dolly. Uh, Marge Champion, who was there in the original, helping her husband create a masterpiece. Sandra Lee, uh, Minnie Fay, a character that apparently didn't exist until Gower thought to bring you on. Yes. And Leroy, <laughs> who directed apparently the best revival since Gower's of Hello, Dolly. Thank you for saying that. And, uh, and was Cornelius Hackle. Yes. yes. Said, I think One of my favorite roles. Uh, it's a I love that role. Uh, do you, would you mind, is there, you is there a little song you. you can give us to go out from Hello, Dolly? Is there a little... Uh, a little sing-along that we all know from Hello, Dolly, to say, to say goodbye? Well, the, the, the title song, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Five, six, seven. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. <laughs> goodbye, Dolly. <laughs> Charming. Bye, Dolly. There is a song from Hello, Dolly that was cut when the show was out of town. So we're going to do it for you now, because you see, one day, Horace Vandegelder found a penny. I put a penny in my pocket, and in a little time, that penny in my pocket had grown into a dime. And in a little longer, a quarter jingled out. I put that quarter in a teapot and I waited till the teapot had a dollar in the spout. I put that dollar in my mattress and had some pleasant dreams till suddenly my mattress was bursting at the seams. And that's how I acquired a Gramercy address. That little penny is the secret, yeah. That penny is the secret of my success. I had a penny in my pocket and not another sou. And with my only shirt tail, I shined a rich man's shoe. He tossed me down a nickel, admiring my skill. I gave that nickel to a blind man, and that blind man left me all his meager savings in his will. I'll move to work next morning, 
I helped a lady cross. That lady was, ha, you guessed it, the mother of the boss. The boss said, you're promoted. I need you by my side. And then I met the boss's daughter, and I wed the boss's daughter, and quite suddenly she died. I bought myself an acre, a silo and a steam. All Yonkers started buying grain and hay and feed. And now I've half a million, but proudly I confess that in my pocket is that penny. Yes, that shiny little penny. It's that penny that's the secret of my success. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Freeze, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, plus public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency, and the Theater Development Fund's Technical Accessibility Program, which helps provide closed captioning. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you, and good night.